My name is Tammy Mott. I'm an advanced registered nurse practitioner. I uh, have a specialty in women's health and a nurse midwifery. I'm 48 years old. Um, I've lived in Bay County for approximately 21 years. I underwent an open heart surgery at the age of 44 um, after a heart attack. Okay, you look at me again. But, God, uh, I think I did. You slow down a little bit, and also, uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, Why don't this I? This isn't a job interview. I know. Why don't I prompt you the first? So yeah. I'll say, um, I mean, tell us your name. Yeah. Let me do okay. that, yeah. and then also too, just a tip. Put hands. your hands together because yeah. we can't see them, but when you move them, we can see your I arms. I can see moving. my arms moving. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So and just you're talking to a friend. Okay. Absolutely. You just met you know, and say, oh yeah, I'm, I'm so and so, and yeah. So. Eyes straight. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and what's your name? Uh, my name is Tammy Mott. Great. And um, how long have you lived in Bay County? Uh, 21 years. You've lived here how long? 21 years. I've lived in Bay County 21 I'm years. I'm sorry. That's okay. No, okay. there's no apologizing. Okay. I've lived in Bay County for 21 years. And when I was 44? Okay. And when I was 44, I had a um, heart attack and underwent a um, open heart surgery. I thought that looked pretty good from here. Yeah. What do you think? Mm -hmm. You would want to do it one more time? Yeah. But you see how that felt different? Mm -hmm. Cadence? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, this is one of those things that sometimes it takes 10 minutes of doing this mm -hmm. to finally go, okay, I'm comfortable now. Yeah. So hopefully we can bypass the 10 minutes. But again, <laughs> I just, know, so. you, you know, right. you just you, you just sat down and, and she wants to know about you. You know, you would never do that. You know. Um, no. You just say, oh, yeah, I'm Jake Manberg, and I've lived here 21 years, and okay. I had a heart attack, you know, just conversation. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to start again. Going to start breath. again? Mm -hmm. Deep breath. Okay. And just do it myself? Or? Sure. Okay. Do it yourself. Okay. My name is Tammy Mott. I am 48 years old. Um, I've lived in Bay County for 21 years. I am a local um, advanced registered nurse practitioner with a specialty in women's health and nurse midwifery. Um, I had a heart attack at the age of 44 and underwent open heart surgery. That's good. I thought that was good. Yeah. See this how it felt? Just mm -hmm. conversation. Okay, so we're going to talk about the symptom part. Okay. So, but we don't, we need to condense it. So, maybe just an overview of what your symptoms were okay. and how you should have known better but you were ignoring them so Again. something like over a period of a weekend i was having shortness of breath and back pain and um, extreme fatigue um, nausea vomiting gas gas pain taking all kinds of medications and um, blaming different things for the symptoms and i really should have known better and also remember, think of her Were you as, recording that? Mm -hmm. I thought that was good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Just think of her as somebody that you see the symptoms in and she's ignoring them. Mm -hmm. And you, it's like, you're telling, it's like, this is the reason why I'm concerned about you. It's because with me, I got this and I ignored it and I did this and this. See? Okay. And it comes across. So, you know, tell her that she needs to be concerned. Okay. Let me think about that for a second. I think I did. I just did okay. <laughs> because when I get into that, when I get into the education part with right. a patient, it is a lot lengthier and a lot more medicalized. Oh, I know, I know. And so, she, and I don't know. I've got to. Jay doesn't know that part. Okay. But after, so she, she had this horrible thing happen to her. She made um, a massive lifestyle mm -hmm. change, um, and she is a rock star now. And she recognized that. Women, in particular, don't recognize the signs and also don't take very good care of themselves. And a lot of times their um, primary care physician is their OB. So she actually educates patients about heart disease mm -hmm. as an OB practitioner. As, yeah. So so there's a whole component oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. of that. I guess this is like the elevator, your elevator speech. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You say, you know, you need to, because you know, people do it to me all the time. You need to worry about your health because, you know, mm -hmm. health disease is this and, you know. Um, but not luxury. She's talking yeah, about luxury. herself right yeah. now. So, um, so again, symptoms, um, the ways that you sort of told yourself everything was fine, that okay. kind of thing. And again, we can edit out if there's any hiccups, so don't worry about that. Okay. Okay, so tell me about what led up to your heart attack and open heart surgery. Well, it was over, it was over a period of a weekend. Um, I began having symptoms of shortness of breath. 
um, extreme fatigue um, beyond words, just indescribable um, feeling tired. Um, a lot of just gastric reflux, um, belching, um, nausea. Um, I had spent the weekend on call up long hours, um, helping deliver babies, um, w working in weird positions, not eating well, eating white bread, things I'd cut out. Um, so over that period of time, all these symptoms, I just added up to being because of the things I'd done. The back pain was because of my position. The shortness of breath was because I ran. The fatigue was because I was up half the night. Um, I got my grandson. I was running with him during that period of time, walking along the beach, doing things like that. So I began having these symptoms. So it was all a reason for it. It never dawned on me that I was actually experiencing a heart attack. Um, just spending time with my family. Um, making poor decisions, not doing the things that I needed to be doing to take care of myself led up to these things. Don't move. What was the hand for? I thought you were getting ready to tell her that there oh. was a, it was uh, like a little ladybug or something on your uh, sweater, but you were doing so well. I thought yeah. he was getting ready to say, stop so we can get that. And I was like, no, it's great. <laughs> I have software digitally. Sorry, that, that yeah. was very rude. And I didn't, but I didn't want to it's talk and screw it up. Yeah. So. Um, no, I thought that was great. Um, so, um, going over what those symptoms were and what you were, that was really good. Can we um, add in, because I'd like to, to cut this part in, um, go back to, you know, being a healthcare professional, mm -hmm. having the training that I do, I should have known better. Right. I was going to start off with a question. Repeating the question. It's like, it's like okay. she, went, she went straight into that uh, statement with no correlating information and she said something weird? Well, but no, I think you can cut the very end of what she said before and, and oh, cool. scooch it in there yeah. and it would Just be fine. When you talk, it's like one of the reasons, the main concern I was concerned about, instead of going like, uh, I was concerned about this and this, it's like, it's sort of quantify the, what you're about to say. Um, it makes the editing so easier. So if you will, um, so I'll ask the question again. And um, so, you're a nurse practitioner, you've had a lot of education. Um, why did you let this go on as long as it did? I do have a lot of education. Um, I've studied cardiac disease and heart disease in women many, many times throughout my career um, in, my in my years in school. Um, I think the symptoms are just so vague for us. Um, we don't have the typical chest pain, crushing pain, up your neck, down your arm. What we have is the back pain the GI upset, um, and we always blame it on something else. And so I didn't, I didn't put the pieces together. If I had stopped and taken time to just take care of me, as women don't do, I, would, I may have put those pieces together. But because I was taking care of this person, working, trying to do what we women do, we multitask. And so doing those things, I didn't stop and see what was happening within my body. That's perfect. Yep, that was excellent. You couldn't have written that better. No, <laughs> no, that was fantastic. Yeah, okay, you just so, told us. Mm -hmm. you didn't think about it, you just told us. So, the day you went to the emergency room, mm. um, and, and start off with the day I went to the emergency room um, in your response, but tell us about that day. Hold on. Oh, oh sorry. Check my focus. Sorry, I talk with my hands too, so. Oh, if I sat on my hands, yeah, I'd never say another okay. word. Don't worry. I think it feels authentic and like we are having a conversation. Mm -hmm. I don't think it looks weird. Okay. If you were, you know, doing this, then that might be, but mm -hmm. not just gesturing. That's okay. that's good. I'm going to get a little bit closer now. Just it's up to you. I just went a little bit closer. Just so talking like, about I was the, getting a little bit more intimate. Yeah. And talking about the day I went, like, once I got to the hospital, I can talk about when I got there and when they gave me morphine and what I kind of remember about the angiogram, but I was drugged up. I don't even so, know that okay. you need to go into the okay. specifics. Okay. This is really more about your thoughts, your feelings, what okay. you experienced, not necessarily the intricacies of the procedure. Okay. Um, because that's for somebody's doctor to explain to them. They don't need to get that level of education from this okay. video. Okay. Um, so tell us about the day you went to the emergency okay. room. So the day that I went to the emergency room started probably about 4 a.m. Um, 
I was taking care of my grandson. He had been spending the night, and he had an accident. So I got him up, got him dressed, got everything changed, and as I was doing that, I started just having the excruciating back pain. The back pain is indescribable. It's You want to just move and push and touch and just move around. And It took me about two and a half, three hours just to even lie back down. And I should have said at that moment, I need to go to the ER. But I didn't because I had him. I had responsibilities. So my daughter came home. My husband actually woke me up. And I was at that moment, I was like, I'm going to go to a walk-in clinic. I There's something going on with my lung. I'm a smoker. I probably have lung cancer. I need to go have it checked out. So my daughter came in and I told her, I said, I'm not going to go to work today. I'm just going to go in and let them cancel all my patients. And then I'm going to go to a walk-in clinic somewhere. I didn't have a family practice. We use our GYNs. So I go to the office and I'm getting out of my vehicle. And one of my physicians that I work with, Dr. Ingram, he actually yelled across the parking lot at me and asked me if I was okay. And I was like, I'll be up there in a minute. So I came inside the building and I was walking to him. Another physician that I work with, Dr. Makeda, he says, are you okay? You look like shit. <laughs> and I said, well, I am thought I was, but now I think that I, maybe I need to go to the emergency room. And they both looked at me and said, absolutely, you need, we need to go. So me, being the independent woman that I am, I grab my keys and I hop in my car. Don't ever do that. And I drive myself to the ER. And the docs thought that they were going to take me. And so I got to the emergency room and I parked across the street from the emergency room and I got out of my vehicle and I walked across the parking lot and up a hill. And as I walked into the emergency room, I was so short of breath, I could not speak. My back was such excruciating pain. Um, and that was the first time in all this, time, this 48, 72 hours that I actually felt chest pain. Um, there happened to be a nurse that was standing, that was there that I knew. And when I saw her, I just pointed to my chest and started crying. Um, at that moment, she came around, grabbed me, got me into the ER, put me on a bed, got an EKG, um, started shooting me with morphine and nitro and just doing all the things that, that we do, thanks to the American Heart Association teaching us to do. Um, and I had called my daughter on the way into the ER and told her I was going. Told her I'd call her when I knew something. Um, and the next thing I know, she was there with me. Um, thankfully, she began to help make decisions on what to do because morphine kind of messes with your brain a little bit. Um, the only thing I really remember is um, just everybody telling me that I just had a heart attack. And, what do you do? You're 44. Um, and it's, very, it's a very surreal thought. All right, let's stop for a minute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm crying too. <laughs> that, that was powerful. You, you held it together and... I'm so sorry. I wish I had a tissue for you. But your okay. eye makeup is not perfect at all. Thanks. Okay. Uh, another five dollar bet. Uh -huh. There won't be a, uh, a, a, a dry a, eye in the house. Uh. Absolutely silent during that part. Well, but you know, people need to under... I mean, even though it's physicians, it's all different physicians in that room. <sighs> they don't most of them will never know what it feels like to have a heart attack mm -hmm. and to know how, especially as a healthcare professional, how vulnerable you feel then. Forget all the questions of your own mortality, right. which is a whole different, they, they will never know that. And the ability just to make your own decisions, you know, not being able to make those decisions, having to rely. As a person who has done all of their decision making. Their I do the life. decisions. Right. I help people make decisions. Right. <laughs> um, and here I am, I'm, and morphine is great for that, but you're so out of it that you can't remember things that are occurring. You know, I can remember hearing things. I don't know what we can do with this during the angiogram. That's scary when you're drugged up and you've just been told you have a heart attack and you know what they need to do, but if you can't fix this, what am I gonna do? Am I gonna die?
Am I going to be there? Hmm. So you have, they do the test, they determine that you have had the heart attack. Uh -huh. So what, what happens after that? Is that when they, you're transferred for surgery? Yeah, or? they come in and they start asking me, what doctors do I want and all these things. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know surgeons and cardiologists and I don't know these people. And, you know, the good thing is I work with some great physicians. And so they help me, help guide me in those decision making. I'm very blessed. I'm blessed with the physicians I work with. I'm blessed with the family I have. I'm blessed with the coworkers at the hospitals. I'm, I'm just blessed to have people that can help me make those decisions. And at that point, I was transferred to another facility. Um, and when I got to that facility, it was very strange because I didn't know anybody. I didn't know these people. Didn't know there were phone calls being going back and forth for people to take care of me. Um, and when I got to the other hospital, I was told I had to wait for two days before I could ever even have my surgery. I thought, because I'm under the influence, I thought I was going over there and have an open heart surgery that day. I didn't realize I was going over there for two days to think about, in my mind, what I had done to myself. I had family history. I mean, women in my family all had heart attacks early in their life, but I knew that. Made poor decisions, poor eating habits, no exercise, smoked cigarettes, ate fast food, just insomnia, staying up, just the things that you shouldn't do. And so I had two days to think about that. Um, and I don't think anybody else understood that that's what I was thinking about. And the doctor's trying to keep my stress level down, keep people out of the room, trying to keep me as safe as possible. But in my, my own mind, I was condemning myself for what I had done. The good thing is, is that at two days, I made decisions. And those decisions were to change my life. Um, the day I had my heart attack, the day I walked into the ER, um, was the last day I've ever had a cigarette. Um, I made a decision, if I made this out of this alive, that I would exercise, I would eat well, I would not go out, I would not eat fast food, I would make a complete difference in my life. I'd lose weight, I'd do cardio, whatever I had to do to be healthy, to be there for my patients, be there for my family, to be there for every, you know, just to do the things that I want to do in my life and to enjoy my grandchildren, um, which I now have four of, so I'm very happy. Two of which I would have never saw. I would have never met them and their joys. Um, so I took those two days and I made those decisions um, and then I underwent open heart surgery. Um, I knew it was gonna be painful. Um, but I'm strong, and I came out of the um, anesthesia um, with my family over me so I could see them, and I, I love that. I love that, and I had great, here comes the rain. <laughs> no, oh, it's not. it was your, your hair yeah. was. The rain just leaves. I think it's just leaves. Yeah. I don't feel any moisture. Woo! Oh, God. Your bag's going away. It's always emotional to talk about this stuff. Yeah, the thing is, is that it's, you know, people at home, mm -hmm. they're like, you know, cigarettes. They take a little, ooh, well, I'm high. Mm -hmm. These are like crack addicts. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of drug to get them to feel. Yeah. You're the lot of drug. To get them to be no. <laughs> you know, um, they, I mean, they spent the last 30 years dealing with people like you. And, yeah. You know, so you got to really hit them hard. Yeah. I wanted to go back for just a minute. Okay. Um, before we make the the transformation. Okay. And, and what you're doing now. Go back to, you're at the hospital in the emergency room. They had run the tests. Tell me about when they came in, your daughter's there, and told you, that you were going to have to have surgery. That's a hard one because I, I remember some of it. Um, so when they came in and they told me that I was going to have surgery, my daughter my um, and my husband both were there um, at that time. And it was 
my first thought was seriously, seriously, I'm 44. Um, why is this happening to me? Am I going to make it? Am I going to survive? Um, am I going to see them again? Um, and why did I do this to myself? That was the, um, the big one. To it's okay. tear up again. I it's just okay. thought that was, you know, we transferred to the other hospital, but there was no, you have to have heart yeah. surgery piece yeah. to explain. So let's go back to you wake up after the surgery. Yeah. Your lovely family mm -hmm. is there with you. Yeah. You've made a decision yeah. to retake your life. Right. Okay, so let's start there. Okay. So I wake up and my family's there with me. Um, it, was very, it was painful. There's no way about that. Um, but I made a decision that my life was changing. And I actually had a conversation with my husband um, because he was a smoker too. And I told him that I did not want cigarettes around me, that this was a choice that I made. And this is kind of um, how I tell my patients now is that I always have the option to smoke a cigarette. I'm not depriving myself. I'm a grown woman. I can go to the grocery store or the gas station and I can buy me a pack of cigarettes at any time that I want to. The difference that with me stopping smoking this time is that I choose to. Deep in my heart, deep in my mind, I no longer want to be a smoker. And so therefore I'm not depriving myself of it, I'm making a decision. And that's what happened while I was in the hospital, is I made a decision that I would no longer be a smoker that I would no longer allow bad habits to take my life away, to take me away from my family, to take me away from the things that I enjoy doing in my life. And so when the nurses would tell me, okay, you got to get out of bed, you got to walk the floor four times, I would get out of bed and I'd walk the floor eight. Um, I would make conscious decisions about what I ordered from the menu in the hospital, you know, what am I going to eat today? Am I going to eat green leafy vegetables or I'm going to order a hamburger with bun on it? Those types of things. Am I going to get the sugary stuff? So I made a decision. I'm going to eat the greens. I'm going to eat the healthy foods. I'm going to um, just take better care of myself. Um, I got really close with a lot of the nurses in there. A lot of the techs, um, even the cafeteria ladies, the food services, they would they knew me. And they knew that I was, you know, one, one of them told me, she says, when you leave here, you're going to do amazing because you've made a decision to do it. And I think that's what it takes, is that decision. How long were you in the hospital? All total, um, seven days. Um, from a Monday to a Sunday. I was there Monday and Tuesday um, waiting for surgery. Monday I was on the floor, Tuesday I was in the ICU. Um, Wednesday I had my surgery in the ICU. I think Thursday I went back to the floor. And Thursday, Friday, and Saturday and Sunday I was on the floor. No, I went home on a Sunday, my, one of my son's birthdays, and Father's Day. I got to go home. Wow. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how fast they can do open heart surgery now. How, yeah. how fast you're... Yeah. I was told I was pretty fast. I was told I was quick. I was told that I did really well. And um, the physician that did my surgery told me if I did everything that he asked me to do, that he would let me go home in four days. So I did everything he asked me to do and a little bit more just to make sure I got to go home. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I think we can, cause you've already alluded to some of the changes you mm -hmm. made. So let's just say briefly, just so we have it. Okay. Um, once you got out of the hospital, you talk about, mm -hmm. you know, you, you created an exercise program for yourself. Mm -hmm. You did stick with the healthy eating. But. You had really made a life change and you held yourself mm -hmm. to it. So, so, and actually on my way home from the hospital, um, one of the biggest places that I would smoke was in my car, riding around, driving. And so I got into my car and I thought, there was a thought that crossed my mind. And, it, and I thought, I could have a cigarette. And then I said to myself, you got to be stupid. This is not what you want for your life. And so for me, that was the defining moment. Because in the hospital, I couldn't go and just smoke a cigarette. But driving home in my vehicle with my husband, if I wanted to smoke, I could have smoked that cigarette. And I made that decision that day that I'm not doing that. It's raining. I just yeah. felt it. Yeah. Okay. Let's just, All right, yeah. so let's. Um, um, 
this stuff can handle a lot. Okay, but let's, I want to get to the end, and okay. then we can come back and do okay. that more. So, um, I don't want to either. talk about uh -huh. how you recognize that, um, you recognize that other women in your, your patients, mm -hmm. other women didn't have the understanding mm -hmm. or the tools to, to create better heart health. Yeah. So talk a little bit about okay. that. So as a nurse practitioner, I'm normally... Um, in GYN, a lot of times we are that woman's primary care provider. And so I have begun since my um, experience to ask women about their smoking, about their family history of heart disease. Um, when I determine that they are a smoker or they have poor eating habits or poor exercise habits, or they have a family history, I do um, share with them my story. Um, and I begin to share with them changes that they can make. I talk to them about you know, making that decision to quit smoking. I talk to them about the importance of doing just walking for an hour a day. I talk to them about eliminating um, fried foods, fat foods, and just incorporating good healthy eating habits into their diet and being screened earlier for their lipids and their, their cholesterol levels. Um, and being seen by a cardiologist earlier if they have a family history and just go into the American Heart Association website, looking at their diet, looking at the warning signs um, and paying attention to themselves and not always taking care of others. Um, which I think is a huge surplus. I just have two more questions. Okay. Can we just do the, uh, the, the end stuff? That's what she's doing. That's okay. what I was mm -hmm. going to say. So, um, Many people in this audience have supported the work of the American Heart Association for years. Um, what would you say, and make sure that you answer back with the question, um, what would you say to the people here who have supported the American Heart Association before? So what would I say to those that support the American Heart Association that are here? Thank you. Um, if it wasn't for the contributions of people, we wouldn't have the education to save women like me. Um, I think it's very important for all of us, to not only to give our money, but our time, our knowledge, um, and ourselves to the men and the women that undergo heart disease. I don't even know that I need to ask a second question. I think that was good, don't you? Yeah, I mean, yeah. So let's, you pull it back and look at it. If you see, you know how this usually how the story builds. Yeah, if I mean, you see any gaping holes, then we can reshoot. We've yeah. got a, we've got almost 